Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. We have a super special guest joining Fanatic Perspective, Mr. Brad Counter. What's good, BK? Hey, Steven. What's up, man? How we doing? What's How we up, doing? man? What's hey. up, man? I appreciate you coming on. Me, you know? I appreciate you, man. Thank you for having me. You are the Texas YouTube king, so I am honored to have been invited to this channel tonight, man. Really appreciate it. Dude, dude, it is the pleasure is all mine. And, and guys, while you're here, if you don't know, check out the triple option on the horn, 104.9, Brad Kellner, Kevin Dunn, Rob Babers. That's the crew. Those are the homies. They, I've, I've listened to Brad for years, for years, going back to when he was interning with Bucky and Aaron. And so just, you know, it's kind of surreal here being on camera and, and, and sharing some time with somebody who I respect greatly in the Texas community and, and really Austin Sports Talk Radio, you know, right, setting the tempo. So, Brad, while we're here, we got to promote our channel, too. We're going to 10K, ladies oh, yeah. and gentlemen. We're going to 10K, so make sure you subscribe on YouTube now. And before we get to what we want to touch on today, because we're going to touch on a bevy of UT topics, Brad got a YouTube channel, for those who don't know. So y'all need to go subscribe. Go go hit up my man BK. Subscribe to him on YouTube. And uh let's get his channel on and popping. Brad, you're on there doing lives, a lot of lives, instant reaction, just interacting with the fans. Yes, sir. Oh, we're trying to break ground, man. I think we're over 300 subscribers right now. So I'm catching up to you. Long ways away, but uh now nah, it's, it's been great, man. YouTube's a lot of fun. It's great to interact with everybody on here. I have a face for radio. I know that, but I'm trying to get into uh, some more webcam stuff, some more TV-like stuff. So I appreciate the plug, man. I appreciate it and love the work that you do. And look, if you're a fan of Steven and Fanatic Perspective in this channel, definitely check out Brad Kellner as well because it's uh, a lot of similar content going on over there. Absolutely. And so I'm excited for us to be having these conversations. And one of the places I want to start with you, and I know it's been, you know, a big, a big overarching theme is Chris Del Conte and his impact on this athletic program. When I think of Chris and the job that he's done here thus far, coming over from TCU, of course, I'm not ready to say, oh, we got to outright give Chris Del Conte his flowers because at the end of the day, the bread is buttered with the football program. And so when the football program gets there, I feel like we'll be ready. But BK, like, honestly, what, could you ask for a better start in terms of an 80s first football hire, an 80s first men's basketball hire, the things that we've already seen from women's basketball? Ch shout out to Charlie Collier going number one overall pick today. Like, what are your thoughts there just overall with Chris Del Conte's presence on this program oh man he's been incredible since taking over in december of 2017 the impact he's made is just ridiculous and it's being felt by every single athletic program on the 40 acres the hires he's made have been spectacular and look we don't know what steve Sarkeesian's going to do just yet we don't know what chris Beard's going to do just yet but look at the other hires he's made since taking over bringing in mike white to lead the softball program they've been really really good they're a women's mm -hmm. college series threat this year they're a top 10 team in the country uh bringing in Vic Schaefer of course to coach women's basketball you mentioned Charlie Collier going 1-1 tonight Vic Schaefer leading Texas to the elite eight in year one after this team wouldn't have made the NCAA tournament last year I mean the job he's done already ridiculous he is exceeding expectations one of the best coaches in women's college basketball and Chris Del Conte was able to bring him in it's not like Vic Schaefer got fired right Right. He was able to make it happen and bring him in from what had been a really, really good women's basketball program at Mississippi State. So those hires have already been great. Yeah, I mean, Chris Beard, I'm a huge fan of the Chris Beard hire. I think he was the best person Texas could have gotten. And then Steve Sarkeesian, you said it, Stephen. I mean, football is where his bread is buttered. And ultimately, fair or not, the success of CDC's tenure in Austin is going to be based on how Steve Sarkeesian does with Texas football. But I'm a big fan of the hire. I think Sark did a great job filling out his coaching staff. And you have to give Chris Del Conte credit because he kind of gave Sark a blank checkbook and said, hey, man, whoever you need, whatever you want, let's make it happen. So the hires have been great. The facilities upgrades have been incredible. Obviously, the South End Zone project at DKR is going to be superb. There's just a lot to like, man. Not everything's been perfect, but 
for the most part, you can't ask for much more from CDC over his first three and a half years. No. And folks, speaking of the, the upgrades, uh, April 24th is coming, right? And, and orange white scrimmage, many people are going to be able to see that South end zone and, and, and how far they've come and the tremendous job he's doing with interacting with the fans. You guys see him on social media. He's present. He's present with the athletic teams and, and the relationship I think he does have with the coaches. I think it's a more familial approach that I think they have at smaller schools like a TCU. And I think he's brought that here in a in an interesting manner to the 40. The other thing that excites me about Chris about Chris Del Conte is how he went about handling his business after the Urban Meyer stuff went overboard, right? Mm -hmm. And they really put everything into context, got three people there, and they went out and did their homework and did their due diligence and took their time and moved. I know a lot of people were like critical of him because at first he was like, Tom Herman's going to be the coach. And then he went out, but he moved very, you know, he was playing chess. He was playing chess. And I appreciated even the room that he's given Steve Sarkeesian and making the staff hires and, and now Chris Beard, right? Cause Chris Beard is, has, they have not, you know, spared any penny with the <laughs> basketball staff hires, right? right. And, and taking other people's head coaches. So overall, I, I think he deserves credit and I don't hear that discussed enough. BK. Uh, I think you're dead on. What do they say? What is it? Lil Wayne said real G's move in silence like lasagna. That's <laughs> what CDC has done with these two coaching hires. Dude, I, I've been so impressed by how close CDC is able to was able to keep those hires close to his chest, man. I mean, think about how many people cover the University of Texas, right? The website, right. the statesman, the radio stations, the TV stations, the YouTube channels. I mean, you could argue there's more media and just more people covering the University of Texas athletic department than any other athletic department in the country, yet – the general public was stunned when Steve Sarkeesian was announced as the Texas football coach. Like, nobody had any leaks on that. Same thing with Chris Beard. Like, you know, we knew about that April 1st deadline and that Chris Beard's buyout went down a right. million dollars on that date. But, I mean, no one really had any clue what was happening until it actually happened. Like, that to me, I don't know if people care about that. Ultimately, it doesn't matter that much how secretive you are of the moves you make as long as you make them. But that to me is really, really impressive from CDC, the fact that... I, I care, though, fired. BK. Why? Good. All right. Yeah, I'm glad you I, do. I, I care because the reason why is because we've had, in my opinion, we've had a culture issue. We've had stuff toxic. We've had stuff leak all over the place. And it looks like half the time, you know, the, the boosters are running the operation. And, I feel, and, and while their money still speaks, at least it needs to be guided through one funnel of, of a person. Mm -hmm. And 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 we've been missing that for a long time, right? And so probably back to the, the lost odds, Mac Brown days, to be real with yeah. you. And and now to see that impact, I because when you look at the programs that move, like how many people talk about Castiglione at, at Oklahoma? People don't talk about him; they just move. Or or, or the Alabama half the eighties in the country that are super says you don't even know their name for a good reason, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. They're like a referee, right? If you do know their name, that means they're doing something bad. Like you don't want to mm -hmm. know the name to your ref. It's it's probably a good thing if the general public, like the non-UT fan base, if they don't know about Chris Del Conte, then that might be a good thing. But no, he's done a great job. And think about the situation he walked into, Stephen. I mean, the Steve Patterson era didn't even last two years. And within that like 18, 19th month stretch, Steve Patterson ran this athletic department into the ground. And we're talking about how much CDC is supporting his head coaches. Dude, Steve Patterson would not support anybody here at Texas. He was no. all about the budget cuts, right? I mean, there was a time within the last five years, Stephen, where Texas's quality control assistance in football, mind you, one of the top 10 football programs of all time, the quality control assistants were making less here than the Kansas football quality control assistants were making. And when Charlie Strong asked Steve Patterson, like, hey, can I get some more money so I can hire some better coaches to try to figure this thing out? Steve Patterson's like, no, I'm just going to raise ticket prices a blended 6% uh, for this fan base. So, I mean, you could argue CDC walked into a dumpster fire, maybe even a landfill fire. 
Now, Mike Perrin, as the interim AD, he did a good job, you know, trying to right. calm things down a little bit, smoothing the waters a little bit. But, you know, even then, like Mike Perrin, great dude, nice guy. I've met him a few times. He did the best he could, but Steven, he he's no AD. Like he wasn't he's not AD. in that. Yeah. So yeah, it's like that's that's not taking a shot by any stretch. So the situation that CDC walked in was not good. And within the span of four years, not even four years, he's been able to really turn things around. And I mean, yeah, this the future of this athletic department looks brighter than it has in at least a decade. I am and and, and one of the things recently, because this takes us into your your guy, right? And and you've been, you were the you were. I feel like this was the hire of the people. For for and you, you do radio every single day, Monday through Friday, triple option, three to seven, right? Um, and one of the things is after Shaka Smart, when when we kind of all knew Shaka Smart was going to leave, it's like Chris Spears the move for a lot of the fans and for you. Personally, why were you beating that drum so hard? And, and where do you think Chris Del Conte got this right? Oh, man. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Chris Beard. To me, he just checks every box. And I won't go too far down the list. But to me, there are just a couple of things that I was really looking for in this basketball hire. Number one, I want a coach who's proven that he can win at a high major level. And it helps even more that Chris Beard has won in the Big 12, right? The fact that he's won in Texas's conference, I think, is more impressive. But just the coach who has won at a power five level of college basketball, that to me was big. Then you've got the in-state ties, right? I mean, Chris right. Beard has proven that he can win in the state of Texas, and he's proven that he can recruit in the state of Texas as well. And then the big thing, Stephen, I mean, ultimately the reason why Shaka Smart was kind of forced out, Chris Beard's proven that he can win in March. I mean, six years for Shaka here in Austin, zero tournament wins. Everybody knows that. Yeah, goose egg. And then for Chris Beard, he's got 10 tournament wins and nine of them coming at Texas Tech in the span of five years, but really only four years because last year there was no NCAA tournament and Tech would have made Correct. the tournament. And look, who knows? They weren't going to be like a Final Four contending team last year. But hey, there was a chance they would have won another tournament game or two a season ago. So proven that he can win in this conference proven that he can win in the state and recruit in the state, and also, most importantly, proven that he can win in March. There was no other candidate out there that had that combination of things, and that's why, to me, Chris Beard was the obvious choice for Texas to make. I love the energy he's brought, especially the staff hires. Uh, one of the things that appealed to me, because I was, I'm not the biggest Chris Beard guy, but I, I've always said, once, you, once you're my head coach, I'm all in. And one of the things that did appeal to me with Chris Beard was his ability to work the transfer portal. And I think we're already seeing that in, in an enormous manner, right? When you bring in Timmy Allen and, and some of these guys, you know, that would ask you from, from, from Kentucky, some big names, bro. Like not just, you know, somebody transferring in from D2, right? Like right. <laughs> no disrespect, but like some peeps, some guys that are, that were, Top forty recruits are a guy in in a, in a Timmy Allen who was who's seventeen six and four, right? Like that's who, who? How many people in the Big Twelve were putting up numbers like that? Not many, not many. And now, and yet, now you got that on your roster. It's crazy. And look, the NCAA recently enacted that one time transfer rule, right? So the transfer portal is packed right now. But the beauty of Chris Beard, he's not new to this. He's not new to this. I mean, he's been getting players out of the transfer portal for the last few years. Uh, two of his top five leading scorers last season came from the transfer portal, including Mac McClung, who led Tech in scoring. Uh, the year Tech made it all the way to the national championship game. I think three of Tech's top five leading scorers that year came from the transfer portal. So obviously everyone's going to benefit from the transfer portal, especially big schools like Texas in desirable locations like Austin. But the fact that Chris Beard is familiar with how to attack the transfer portal, I think makes things even better. And Steven, with the Moody Center opening up next season and the new yep. practice facility, $60 million practice facility opening up next season, plus Austin, plus Chris Beard. I mean, if you think Chris Beard's doing a good job in the portal to this point, just wait and see, man. He is going to be dominating this thing for years to come. So it's the new age of college basketball, man. It's the new way to build a roster, especially with Texas this year with all of the roster attrition that we've seen over the past couple of weeks. But it's good to know that you've got a guy who knows what he's doing and knows how to recruit not only kids out of high school, but kids in the portal as well. 
Well, even speaking on the kids out of high school, like his philosophy of I'm, I have to build every team, not two years out, not three years out. I build in one year increments. He said that at Texas Tech. And that's something that is, that rings to me because when you look at how he's decided to even construct on an annual basis, it's always a mix of, yeah, some high school guys, if they develop, great, if they can play. But I'm always going to have some dudes in the portal who are, have already been coached up, already polished, ready to go. The other thing I look at with Chris Beard is what are the – what are the how can he keep this momentum going? Because there's a buzz around Texas basketball right now that hasn't been there in years. Fair or not, it's not like everything was all – they weren't terrible. They were top 15 team last year. But the buzz in terms of that that energy, how can he continue to to maximize on that? Because we're talking about, I think one of the things that can help him is as successful as he's been in the portal, and that'll buy him some time in high school recruiting for sure. But Greg Brown, mm. Matt Coleman, Jericho Sims, Courtney Ramey, can he recruit any of them to come back? Even if it's just one of those guys. Because I think any of those guys can help you. What are your thoughts on any of those guys? Do you think any of we have a chance to bring any of them back? Man, I do think there is a chance to bring at least one of those four guys back. Now, nothing is set in stone, but I do think there is a possibility, a high possibility, that at least one of those guys comes back. I'll go in order, or at least the order that you said it. Least, sure, sure, sure. Look, I, it's been 10 seconds. I can't remember anything past two seconds, so I don't so even know. So start with Greg Brown. Order. All right, Greg Brown, cool. That's where I was going to start, just making sure I had that right. You know, Greg Brown is is the most interesting one to me. Obviously, a, a highly touted recruit coming out of high school, McDonald's All-American, one of the top 10 to 15 players in the country. If you looked at mock drafts before this past season, he was a lottery pick, but – Needless yeah. to say, if you watch Texas basketball this year, if you watch Greg Brown play, he did not look like an NBA player. He did not look like a lottery pick. A disappointing freshman campaign. But if you look at mock drafts now, Greg Brown's still a first-round pick in most of them. And I know that might sound egregious to a lot of people out there, and I get it. But the NBA draft is based on potential, and Greg Brown clearly has a lot of that. I've heard differing things with Greg Brown. Honestly, if, if we shot this video two weeks ago, Stephen, I would have said, yeah, Greg Brown's coming back. Like I was told, Greg Brown's going to come back, and he's about to announce it. And then if we would have shot this video five days ago, I would have said, nah, now I'm being told Greg Brown is going to leave. So my point is, I don't know about Greg Brown. I don't have a great read on him either way. I will say this, though. I'll give the people some here. I'll give your, your subscribers, your followers something here. Let's so, get it. Do you remember the name Mo Isom? Marik Isom, does that do anything? Yes, I do. Yes, okay. I do. He and transferred he played, in real late to our program. Yes, he was a grad transfer to Shaka Smart in Texas from Arkansas Little Rock, where he was coached by Chris Beard on that one Chris Beard team he had at Little Rock where they made it. They won 30-something games. Yep. Yeah, won a tournament game that year, 12-5 upset over Purdue. Mo Isom is boys with Chris Beard to this day, and apparently Jericho Sims has been working out with Mo Isom a lot here in Central Texas. And there's a belief that Jericho Sims is thinking, hey, man, if I came back for another year to be developed by Chris Beard and Mo Isom, that might improve my draft stock. Because I think Jericho Sims should be a draft pick right now. But if you look at a lot of mock drafts, he's not in there, first or second round. So right. Jericho Sims, I think there's a chance. Matt Coleman, I'd love – I mean, Jericho and Matt, I'd love to get – I'd love to get all four of those guys back. But to me, like, those two are on a different level. Uh, Matt Coleman, four-year starter at point guard. You would love to have a guy you feel good about running the show. I, we know Chris Beard loves Matt Coleman. I mean, he brought up Matt Coleman during his introductory press conference a couple of times. Like, he is a big fan of Matt Coleman, so I know Beard wants him back. I don't know if you saw this, but maybe a week ago, Matt Coleman was selling some of his team-issued slash game-worn gear on a website called The Player's Trunk. Have you heard of this before? No, I have not. Yeah, so The Player's Trunk. Enlighten like, me. Yeah, it's like a website that I think a couple of former college basketball players created a couple of years ago, and it basically is for former college athletes to sell their stuff online, all their gear, all their swag. I hate that I said that word. Sorry. Was this started by, like, the Ohio State guys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jim Tressel. Jim Tressel actually spearheaded this. Oh, man. I, I can't remember. I think it was like two no-name college athletes who were like pissed that 
they couldn't make any money on all, all this gear that they picked up in college. I mean, you think about how many shirts and shoes and shorts and you talk football, like all the bowl gear that you get every year. Like there's so much stuff. And I guess before the players trunk, there was no way to really profit off of this. So okay. in Matt Coleman's case, he's been selling some stuff on there. And when I saw that, I'm like, well, that means he's gone, right? Like, wouldn't that kind of be an NCAA violation to be selling gear and making money off of stuff while you're still in school? But apparently, I've been told, I hate being sources guy. Like, this is not a good intro here because everyone's like, to hell with this D-bag talking about sources all the time. But apparently <laughs> – what happens when you bring media people on the uh, I know. Channel. I hate myself. I, I've become who I hate, Stephen. It's unreal. <laughs> but apparently, there's still a way where Matt Coleman – can come back to school and maybe compliance turns the other cheek. And I, I, I think he's on the fence. I legitimately think he is on the fence. So, yes, I think there's a chance he comes back. Courtney Ramey, same. But, I mean, Courtney Ramey, I don't think would go to the league, right? The other three guys, I think, would test the draft waters. Courtney Ramey, I don't think is there, but maybe he transfers somewhere else. Uh, he was really close to going to Mizzou, I think, when he picked Texas late in yeah. his recruiting process. So, maybe he flips there. Yeah, home state, as you mentioned. So, Long-winded answer to your question, but I, I do think there is a chance that at least one of those guys comes back. And, and you could argue that would be the most impressive recruiting effort for Chris Beard to this point if he's able to get some of those dudes here. And if it's – if it's so in your, in your eye right now, the guy that would probably be the best odds to return would be Jericho Sims. I'd be inclined to agree with you if, you know, based upon just some of the things I've heard as well. Now, sure. with – Matt Coleman, Tran threw this out to me, and this is just something we were thinking about. This is how fans think, right? I, He's the one guy, I understand why Chris Beard wants him so much because he was the trigger man. He was, he was Shaka's lieutenant. That's how I used to refer to him, right? Yeah. And Chris Beard obviously has a lot of respect for Shaka Smart, has a lot of respect for Matt Coleman. And if anybody understands his strengths and weaknesses is Chris Beard because he was the one doing all this prep against this kid for the last four years, right? Or how many years he was at Tech, right? So I understand him saying, hey, if I can get Matt Coleman back here, that makes all – even the the guards I have coming in, even the Jalen Tyson's coming in who's, you know, wing, Jace Febris coming back who – shout out to him mm -hmm. and Andrew Jones for, for already deciding to come on board. So Chris Beard deserves credit from a recruiting standpoint there. But in terms of Matt Coleman, what Tran had thrown out to me was like, understanding his relationship with Shaka Smart, like, is there any way he could be a grad transfer to Marquette? Mm. Like and go and go there? Like I, I know some of those other recruits have already gone and they've, you know, it's kind of like a swap I, I look at. Like the guys we had either, you know, got out of there and, and I love the way Chris Beard handled that, by the way, and and being player first. That's yeah. a good look to the rest of the kids out there. Very, very Lincoln Riley, take notes. That's how you handle that <laughs> situation. Yep. <laughs> and and when you look at Matt Coleman, I, I think that's the one guy where it's interesting. Courtney Ramey, I I think he probably hits the portal for different reasons. I don't think it has anything to do with the staff. I think he's he fell into some sort of mental funk last year that I can't explain. And one of our one of my subscribers said, Hey. I, th I don't think the brother was right after that that spat he had with Andrew Jones. Yep, your subscriber's right. I mean, if you look at his numbers after that West Virginia game, they went way down. I mean, I know Texas won the Big 12 tournament, right, those two games up in KC. Mm -hmm. I think Courtney Ramey had a total of three points, a total of three points in those two games. So he was almost more of a liability than an asset for this team late. They won in spite of him and Greg Brown, to be honest with you. Great point. Great point. So, yeah, maybe you're right. Uh, maybe Courtney Ramey does want a fresh start. Honestly, as weird as it sounds, because he's the one guy that at this point I think has the dimmest NBA future, uh, he might be the least likely guy to return because of what you said, because of the new coach. Like maybe he is looking for a fresh start. I, I think he's graduated. Not that it matters with the one-time transfer rule, but like maybe sure. school is not that big of an issue for him at this point if he already has his degree. So, yeah, I – I wouldn't be surprised at all if if he decides to uh, enter the portal and at least see what's out there. There's another point I want to add with Courtney Ramey as well because it, he's he's one of these guys who I think 
could be a he he's shown the ability to be a tremendous college guard. He has athletic limitations and he just never got some of that stuff honed in. I mean, I've never seen somebody get their shot blocked so many times as consistently, but it's just understanding that, right? And understanding how to play. And I saw him because there's Courtney Wayne Ramey improved his shooting. He was a 40 something percent three point shooter, improved his free throw stuff. He, I think his first year he was in the sixties. He was in the eighties free throw, free throw yep. line, overall field goal. Like he's improved certain skills of his game. And I think, with the way Chris Beard does, you know, a lot of that motion stuff, he would actually be a good fit and could be a pit bull on defense for Coach Beard. No doubt about it. I think it's up here. Mm -hmm. I personally think it's up here. And I think one of the things is Andrew Jones is 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 an alpha. I mean, you got to be an alpha to, to get through what he's gotten through. Oh, yeah. And I think some of that just clashed last year. And that's just – Again, me looking at it from a fan perspective on the court, what I'm seeing, because I pay attention to all these brothers' body language. So with him, Courtney Ramey's the guy I think he could prob probably move on. If I'm Greg Brown, now I want to make this comment on him too. And, and I think you can still enter like the NBA draft combine and not sign, right? Right. Mm -hmm. If I'm him, I would go through the process, but I just wouldn't sign. And yeah. I would just ask Coach – Keep a spot for me. And I think that's fair. Like, because he is in a weird place. Like, he's going to go in the 20s unless somebody's just like, I love his tools. I love his motor. I love his passion for basketball. We can fix the other stuff. Right? Like, if, if somebody in the teens is going to be like that, then cool. But right now, like, the guy that really helped himself was Kai Jones, which is why he's now the lottery pick. Mm -hmm. Right? Because he just got better and better throughout yeah. the year when everybody else was, you know, kind of, you know, show that regression. So Greg Brown, I would like to, if I was him, I would entertain the process and not sign. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's a lot of guys who are doing that. And my guess is if Greg Brown does entertain it, he's going to hear what he wants to hear. Like they usually tell you, Hey, you're going to be a first round pick or, Hey, you should go back to school. That's kind of how it works. Those are kind of the two categories here. So I would guess NBA scouts are going to tell Greg Brown he's going to be a first round pick. So if he does test the waters, he might like what he hear, uh, like what he hears, and then decide to go. But no, I mean I don't hate that plan at all. And look, it's always an interesting question, right? You know, Greg Brown needs more development. We know Greg Brown needs more development. We saw that last year. But if you go to the league, you're still going to get developed. Might be in the G League, but might be in the G League, right? You're making money. You're making money. Like, that's big. I mean, it's hard to – when six figures is staring at you right in the face or seven figures is staring at you right in the face and your choices are, okay, I can get that money now or I can go back and play for free for another year and wait and risk a potential injury. And, look, nobody's talked about this, Stephen, and I, I hope this is not the case for Greg Brown, and I feel bad even bringing it up. What happens if GB3 comes back next year and he gets worse or he just stays the exact same? then that potential is not as high risk. anymore because we've seen him for two years in college and well, he wasn't very good in college. So, like, everybody talks about, you know, uh, if he Making goes the now, assumption that he would make a leap. Exactly. But there is risk in coming back with the injury, with the not developing. So it's a tough decision for Greg Brown. I think he needs more time in college, but it's hard for me to ever fault a kid wanting to get his paper earlier. Guys, make sure you subscribe to YouTube. Brad Kellner, let's get his subs up. We, we need to get him over a thousand ASAP. ASAP. He'll do more lives if you do it. I promise. There you go. I appreciate that. And for those that. of you who listen to BK all the time on the radio, when he's doing the lives, you get direct interaction. All people talking about, I called up the phone line, I couldn't get through. I want to talk to BK, couldn't get through. Boom. Now you got direct access. I, I, I want to add to this point on Greg Brown, too, because I'm gonna pretend. Let's do a little role play. So I'm gonna be, Ooh. I'm gonna be Chris. I'm gonna be Chris Beard. Kinky. This is this is. Hey, you're talking my language <laughs> now, Steve. Come on, man. I'm very intrigued with this. Let's go. Yes, sir. Fanatic perspective after dark. <laughs> now, if I'm Chris, I'll just say it this way: If I'm Chris Beard, my sales pitch is: A, I know you love Texas. Your legacy. This is home. Did you really get a, a real college experience with COVID last year? Did you really, really get 
that time in the gym, that time in the weight room. Like you came into a situation under chaos where you needed some of that development. You also came onto a team, no disrespect to shock or anything like that, but you came onto a team that was returning a hundred percent of their production that was already like this. And you were trying to fit into a situation where they were already kind of meshed, but now everything is fluid. Now everything's new. And you, you give us something that we don't have on this roster with that athleticism, that passion. And I think you would be a better fit in terms of how we're going to play than the style you were asked to play in the previous season where you kind of ended up in the corner shooting a lot of threes. Yes, brother, you need to work on your ball handling. Everybody in the world knows you're going left 95% of the time. <laughs> These are things that we will develop. We've got top-tier coaching staff. Again, what type of experience do you want to have? Because you're not like in other people's situations where you don't have ties to school, you don't have ties to the area, things like that. And I feel like you being a prideful person, you want to left something better than what you found it. Come back for another year. Look at what Blake Griffin came back for another year. He ended up being number one overall pick. There's there's guys out here who have stayed a couple years and gotten themselves right and gotten into the lottery. So while we're talking about you could regress or stay still, there is the opportunity for you to get better and 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 enjoy that experience and have a true college season. So that would be my pitch. I'm so I mean, since we're doing role play, I feel like I should be taking off some clothes right now, man. I mean, that was <laughs> That was great. That was really well done. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if Chris Beard says something very close to that. That was a great pitch right there. And yeah, there have been guys in Texas basketball history who decided to come back for a second year and really improve their draft stock. Look at LaMarcus Aldridge, right? Just announced that he was retiring Perfect. today, came back for a sophomore year, ended up being a top five pick in the draft, had a phenomenal NBA career. I mean, a borderline Hall of Fame NBA career. So you could maybe make that comp, too, if you're Chris Beard. But, yeah, that's really well said, man. I mean, that's that's the pitch right there. I don't think Shaka Smart used Greg Brown the right way at all. Obviously, a new coaching staff, new players around Greg Brown could really make things different and improve his game in a big, big way. And we know Greg Brown, but Greg Brown loves him some Greg Brown. And I don't mean that in a bad way at all. But he – wrong with that. You follow him on social media, and you go – I went and watched a few of his high school games. Like, he loves him some him. And, dude, if I was that type of athlete, shit, I would love me some me, too. I already do love me some me. But, my God, if I was that good at anything, I'd be talking so much smack left and right. It'd be unreal. But you mentioned – One of the – oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, you mentioned, like, how much he loves Texas. Like, a big part of why he came to Texas, yes, he loves Texas, but he also loves the spotlight that college basketball gives you. That's why he chose UT over the G League pathway to the league program. Right. Like when that was the decision he was making, I felt pretty confident the whole time that he was coming to UT. And that's not because like of sources or people I talk to behind the scenes. That's me knowing Greg Brown, interviewing Greg Brown a few times in high school, like knowing his personality. So you also have that like developing in the G League is great. You make money, as I mentioned, but nobody's watching G League basketball. Everybody is going to be watching year one of Chris Beard at Texas. Like, yes. if you want people, if you want scouts, of course, like NBA scouts will be looking at you and executives will be looking at you. But if you want fans, like if you want to build your brand, best way to do it is probably coming back to UT for another year. Dude, and, and this is the year everybody's – even even people, you know, we, we talked about – and we have – not me and you, but Royal Ivy was a name that was thrown out there a lot. And I love the fact that Royal Ivy, TJ Ford, they have a teammate of theirs who's on the staff, and Chris Ogden. You have Kevin Durant, all these people that are, are going to be re-immersed into the program that it's just a new energy. It's a new energy. Not that they were being shunned or excluded like we've seen from other coaches in other sports before, but it's just a new energy. And, and, it's, and it's a person that's leading that's a Texas X. Yeah. It's a little bit different. And so you talk about the eyeballs on the program. Shoot, add in the Texas Tech fans that got eyeballs on the program. <laughs> our, our numbers are going to be through the roof. It, it's so funny to me, just touching on this real quick, how Texas Tech folks went from Chris Beard as our Lord and Savior to, oh, you know, you guys are going to be real frustrated with that offense. So you got, you know, Jalen Tyson, are you uh, sure you want to play? Like, like, you see how people switch up overnight, bro? It's <laughs> unreal. 
It is unreal. I mean, you hear tech fans talk about Chris Beard right now in the Chris Beard era, by the way, which was the best five-year run in Texas Tech basketball history. They literally speak about Chris Beard now like he was some guy who won a contest and got to be along for the ride. Or almost like he was a like he's like a make a wish kid who was given the opportunity to be a small part of Texas Tech's basketball success over the last five years. It's like, dude, it was all Mark Adams. It was all all of the players, all of the guys who are staying here. It was all of them. Chris Beard, Chris Beard was lucky to be in on this, dude. He's not even a good coach. He's not a good recruiter. He is nothing. It is so <laughs> funny, man. You're dead on. You are dead on. I mean, seemingly overnight, they went from idolizing this they guy. They switched up. Yeah, they went from idolizing this dude. I mean, he was bigger than the mayor of Lubbock. They had shirts and hats and statues pretty much all over town. They went from that to hating him within the blink of an eye. And look, I, I don't right. blame them. I don't blame them. I know this video is not about this, and sorry to take it this direction. But look, that's Texas is Texas Tech's biggest rival, right? Like, we don't consider Texas Tech our biggest rival, but they consider us our biggest rival. Right. So it would have been one thing for Chris Beard to – take the North Carolina job like they wouldn't have loved that but they would have understood but for him to take the UT job I mean that is twisting the knife that is pouring a whole gallon of salt in the wound let me tell you Stephen I'm here for it I'm all I'm here for it way too. here for it dude Thursday night like last Thursday or two Thursdays ago whenever the news dropped I went and hung out with some Texas Tech fans and I went and had a few beers with them and dude I didn't have to say a word like, I came in there just ready to go. I was like, I'm going to fire away, take all of these shots. Oh, they did all the talking for me. It was beautiful, man. I was I was kind of getting off to it. I'm not going to lie. I was really enjoying myself hearing how upset and depressed they were that Chris Beard, their chosen son, had left them for Texas. It was beautiful. It was, it, it, it's been beautiful. Shout out to the Texas Tech fans who I know are watching out there. Oh, and some no. of you guys are really good sports about it. Some of you guys get the business. and Actually, a lot of you guys. I will give some a lot of them credit. Uh, and the, for those of you who are butthurt and decided to just hit the dislike button on, on my Chris Beer videos, I love you. The feeling is mutual. <laughs> and, it, it, you know, it's, it's just like, I, I get it, you know. It's like, hey, I know... It's okay. We were going to break up or you're going to go. Maybe you want to upgrade, but why her? Yeah. Why'd you have to go to her? <laughs> Dude. It, it, we've been there. <laughs> I know. I know. And Texas Tech is starting to become Texas A&M. At least the stereotypical Texas Tech basketball fan is starting to become the Texas A&M fan where I don't think Texas Tech's goal next year is to be a really good team. I think their goal is to beat Texas or at least be better than Texas. Like that to me, like every decision that they've made, hearing Kirby Hokut at the press conference after Beard took the Texas job, hearing Kirby Hokut at Mark Adams' introductory press conference, hell, the fact that they hired Mark Adams, they Mark kept Adams. him from his Beard staff, like Mark all of Adams that stuff. Comments. And I don't know if you saw this. So when, when Andrew Jones and Jace Febris announced that they were coming back to UT, they tweeted out graphics that said, run it back. Well, that same day, Texas Tech's official basketball Twitter account tweeted out a picture of a couple of guys at practice, and the caption was, run it forward. Dude, it's like they only care about being better than Texas. They only care about sticking it to Chris Beard. And I'm not saying every Tech fan. Like, there are Tech fans who are right. like, no, nah, we still want to be good at whatever. Beating Texas would be nice. But it's like the stereotypical Aggie where the joke was, and hell, some Aggies would even admit that, like, oh, if we beat Texas in football, it's a successful year. We can go 1-11. and If we beat Texas – I'm cool with it. Like, it almost feels like tech basketball now, or at least a lot of tech basketball fans, and hell, maybe even some people in the program are, like, focused mainly on beating Chris Beard more than even being a good program. I agree. I agree. And, and But like you said, we're here for it. Oh, At yeah. the end of the day, we're here for it. I do want to touch on football real, real quick before we head out. And I know that's the bread one. And, and BK will have more football conversations because, you know, that's 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 what we hear, especially orange white scrimmage coming up. Uh, Denzel Okafor's comments today about Casey Thompson taking majority of the snaps as QB one Hudson Card thing. Where 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 do you fall right now on the the quarterback battle? Because that I mean mainstream media, national media, people want to know who's going to be the starting quarterback at the University of Texas. 
For sure. Can I mention this real quick on those Denzel before comments? So I saw the tweets, and I think uh, I'll give Anwar Richardson some love. I think he had the first tweet with Denzel Okafor's comments talking about the distribution of snaps at Texas spring practice. And he said, as you said, Casey Thompson was getting the majority of reps with the ones. You know, I went and watched the video. Texas Sports posted the player availabilities on YouTube. And I watched it a few times, and I didn't hear that quote. I didn't hear Denzel Okafor say that. Like, I heard he was asked about the quarterbacks, and he talked about both quarterbacks for a little bit, had some praise for both of them. But I didn't hear that exact part where he said Casey's getting more reps with the ones and Hudson's kind of coming in every once in a while. You know what happened, Stephen? Texas sports, they edited that part out. They cut it out. I kid you not. If you go on YouTube, you're on YouTube, you're watching this. If you go to the Texas Longhorns video of the Denzel Okafor, David Benda player availability, it's within the first couple of minutes. You will not hear that quote from Denzel Okafor. And you'll actually notice like a little edit, a little seamless transition in there. So UT is trying to keep their cards close to their chest. We talked about that with CDC earlier. Uh, they're trying to keep the QB competition relatively close too. So I don't think they were real happy with – Denzel Okafor saying what he said today. Now I was I was surprised when I heard the quote. I was surprised that that was said. Mm -hmm. Me too. Me too. And now to answer your original question, like I think Casey Thompson probably has the lead right now. I mean the fact that he's been on campus for three years. I know it was with a different coaching staff, but he's been a college football player for three seasons. Hudson Card has only been a college football player for one. Of course, we saw what Casey did in the Alamo Bowl. I mean four touchdowns in a half of football in a bowl game like that was incredible coming in cold off the bench so a lot of texas one fans score game mm -hmm. exactly a lot of texas fans saw that you know steve sarkeesian has obviously went back and watched the film on that a couple of times too but to me there's a side effect with this decision steven you got to keep the transfer portal in mind now ultimately the decision for sark comes down to who gives my team the best chance to win games and if that's hudson card then you probably have to go with hudson card but Texas only has three scholarship quarterbacks on the roster right now. And the third one is a true freshman and Charles Wright. And I love Charles Wright. I called his games in high school. Huge fan, great kid, great family. I think he's going to be better than people think. But you don't want a true freshman being your second string quarterback. So my thought is, if Hudson Card wins this job, Casey Thompson's probably gone. Now, maybe the same is true if Casey wins the job. Like maybe Hudson Card is like, dude, I want to go play right now. I want to go play right now. I don't want to be a backup for another year or two years since Casey Thompson has two more years left of eligibility. So maybe that happens either way. But I think the likelihood is higher if Hudson Carr wins the job. The likelihood to me is very high that uh, Casey Thompson enters the portal. And that I is agree. not an ideal situation for Sark at all. So once again, that, that can't be like the main focus. But I wouldn't be surprised if that is at least part of the decision if Casey Thompson wins this gig. It's, it's something I brought up on a previous video as well in terms of you need two quarterbacks. And if, if, if you have a situation where Casey Thompson starts the year, nobody's – I mean, as long as fans know that, you know, there's no – let me rephrase. As long as the team knows that, hey, behind the scenes, Hudson Card's been way better than Casey Thompson, why the hell is Casey starting? I don't think Sark would do that. He doesn't come off as that type of coach. However, if they're even right now with how things are, we'll have the older guy play and it can be an ongoing thing where, you know, we've seen people make moves in season. We ha it happens quite often where somebody can be overtaken for that position. The other thing too, COVID and injuries, like you may have a week where he needs to play anyway because right. somebody tested positive. So this is the world that we, we live in now. And I think people... Unfortunately, with sports, you have to have that a part of the brain trust until, you know, this, this virus goes away. So, you know, with, with, with understanding the, the nuance there, you know, I think this is something that's going to play out until the game week of Louisiana. That's just the way – that's just my, my thinking there. I think you're right on with Charles, Charles Wright. He's, I mean, he's, he's got all the potential – even as a, only a three-star, don't matter. I don't care about stars. I look at the tape. Arm looks good. Arm looks live on huddle. Played mm -hmm. through adversity at a school that wasn't, you know, he's playing against some big boys in Central Texas area, and he held his own. But he's like 185 pounds right now. Like right. he's, you know, they got to develop him physically 
first before he can get out there. Like Hudson Card's physical development has been impressive over the last year of just being in the strength and conditioning program. So I think that Charles Wright needs to have that t- time in there as well. Um, but I appreciate that, man, just touching on that. Any other football thoughts before we sign off here, brother? Oh, man, I'm excited for the spring game. I know you are, too. I'm just excited to see the work that these guys have put in and, of course, to see what the new-look Texas offense looks like. Now, I don't know how much Stark is going to unveil for us next weekend because, you know, teams across the country or teams on Texas' schedule, at least, will be watching film, trying to figure out what this offense is going to look like in the fall. But I'm really looking forward to finally getting to see what these guys look like. And uh, it's going to be fun, man, the Sark era. It's it's a good time to be a UT fan right now, Steven. There's no question about that. It, it's fun. There seems like there's hope, real hope. It seems like you have people in charge. I'm going to use an old Tom Herman word. It seems to be alignment here. Oh, no. What have you done? I hope it jinxes. I hope he, it jinxes. Tom Herman is like, like Voldemort now, dude. It's like he, he will not be made. Cut the off! <laughs> <laughs> Cut the feet. That's how they were. That's that. That was John Bianco today when yeah. Denzel Okafor said that. <laughs> Cut the feet. <laughs> oh man, That's I'm sorry. I, I will never. We're not allowed to say a lot of it anymore. <laughs> I, I forgot about that. Um, but but in all in all seriousness, like just seeing from top down how they're moving in in the the programs. Hopefully, a lot of that that drama and that toxicity and people beefing behind there's always going to be stuff going on even at the good programs there's stuff going on but as a fan i think come april 24th just being out there you know people are going to be actually going to have a spring game which we didn't get to have last year a lot of people are going to be seeing the stadium for the first time in it with the with the new updates and a lot of people some people hopefully you guys are being safe and and doing everything you need to do will be around people for the first time so it's a lot of exciting things going on BK, I cannot thank you enough for coming on here, brother. Um, guys, we're going to have – our next conversation is probably going to be a live. We're going to do some lives with BK. We'll have Tran on too and, and just chop it up as, as fans. But please, please, please go subscribe to his YouTube channel so you can have more access to, to, to Brad Kellner. Those of you who are triple option fans, those of you downloading the Horn app podcast the whole bit, I know I am, you know, consuming their content, everybody. So, Brad, thank you so much for coming on, man. Appreciate it. The pleasure was mine. Like I said, you're the king of Texas YouTube. So it's an honor to share the screen with you. I feel like an idiot. I'm in front of a green screen right now, and we're just not using it at all. Uh, I'm surprised we've gone this far in the video without you calling me out. Shows the kind of guy you are. I appreciate that, man. But, no, I'm looking forward to this partnership. I've loved your work for a number of years now, and – I'm excited that you're close to 10K, man. Let's make it happen. We got to get Fanatic Perspective to 10K. Steven's the nicest dude in the world, one of the best in the business. I appreciate you giving me this opportunity tonight, man. Thanks, BK. Guys, remember, let me get in the camera. Horns, always up. Appreciate y'all.